If you have a more complicated network that contains multiple Ethernet devices, you'll need to use an Ethernet switcher to connect all of them. Muse Research recommends that you use a switcher with a minimum bandwidth of 100 base T, although if you plan to use multiple receptors in a uniwired studio, then a fast gigabit switcher will yield more simultaneous audio and MIDI tracks. 10 base T switchers are too slow for most receptor applications. Many networks, particularly those with a broadband modem, contain a device known as an Ethernet router. Routers let multiple computers share a single internet connection, and they contain DHCP servers, which means that they will provide IP addresses to all the Ethernet devices in a network. So, if your network contains a router, you can configure Receptor to get an IP address automatically, as provided by the DHCP server in your router. So let's look at how to set up Receptor for this purpose. Some of you may have a router that has a built-in multiport switcher. Now if this device has enough Ethernet ports for all your equipment, then you won't need an additional switcher. Others may have a router without a built-in switcher or perhaps a wireless router, like the Apple AirPort Extreme. In this case, you'll need to connect an Ethernet switcher to the router's uplink port and plug your computer, receptor, and your other Ethernet devices into the switcher. Note that, in general, wireless networking is too slow for snappy receptor communication, and it's definitely too slow for UniWire. So, even if you have a wireless network, you should still use a wired connection to the computer that will control a receptor. Make sure to use a standard Ethernet cable when connecting receptor to your switcher. You don't want to use a crossover Ethernet cable. Now, if like a lot of people, you have a box full of cables and aren't sure which are standard and which are crossover, here's a simple way to tell. Hold the two connectors side by side and orient them so they face exactly the same way. Make sure to hold them so you can see the little colored wires inside the connector and tell which pins those wires go to. On a standard Ethernet cable, these colored wires will all be connected to the same pins. Now that's why a standard Ethernet cable is also known as a straight through Ethernet cable. On a crossover Ethernet cable, some of these colored wires will be connected to different pins in the two cables. In other words, some of the wires will cross over inside the cable. So, step by step, here's how to set up receptor with a router and a switcher. Make sure your router is configured as a DHCP server by following the instructions in its manual. If you're using an external switcher, connect it to your router as described in your router manual and make sure that both devices are on. Connect one end of your standard Ethernet cable to receptor and one end to your switcher. It's essential that you have both ends of this cable connected before proceeding. If you don't, your network won't work properly. Next, press the setup button on receptor's front panel and then rotate the top display knob until the TCP IP setup parameter is displayed on the top line. Rotate the bottom display knob until the word auto DHCP is displayed. Push the bottom display knob to apply your selection. Receptor will ask if you are sure, so rotate the bottom display knob to select yes and then press it to apply your answer. Receptor will now put itself into auto DHCP mode. Double press your receptor's power button to shut it down and shut down your computer as well. Make sure your router and switcher are on and then turn on your computer and receptor. Once both your computer and receptor have rebooted, your router will have provided a unique IP address to both of them, meaning they can now talk to each other.